My name is Lizzie. Each week I'm bringing along a different origami fold and that's to encourage you to take some time out for your well-being, for your self-care. I hope origami can be a lovely way of focusing your mind and finding out how much is possible with so little just from a piece of paper. So these films are all for my colleagues in hospital, UCH, and for patients, but they're for everybody. So I really hope you can join us and I hope this will be a lovely way to relax. So it's coming up towards Remembrance Day and thinking of the red poppy as very much a symbol of remembrance and also of hope for peace for the future as well. They have, <clears throat> it's a way that we can show our support to the armed forces community and um, that, that really came about from after the World War I, um, the very bleak fields that were desolated after war, um, the first the first plants that really emerged were the poppies. And so out of that bleak landscape, these amazing red poppies appeared and it feels like such a beautiful symbol of lives that were sadly lost and a way of remembering. And it was in 1915, um, a Canadian doctor, John McRae, um, wrote a poem in remembrance of a friend that he lost and it's called In Flanders Fields, which is a very famous poem and where this symbol has really come from. So this, um, this fold is very much to support that time, but not in any way um, to prevent you please going and donating um, and buying yourself a poppy um, yourself or donating online to the Royal British League. Um, so this flower I would recommend for sort of folding for your contemplation at home or maybe in your workplace, you could put one up as well. Um, so this is actually based on a traditional Japanese fold, which is of a cornflower and cornflowers also grow on disrupted land. And I think actually the symbol of these flowers that come out of really difficult times is a lovely, lovely thing to symbolise resilience and that uh, it's possible to grow out of difficult situations. So I hope you'll enjoy this. It's, um, it's got a lovely kind of... Um, fold to it that it sort of curves up as well so it's a really nice shape you can see you can hold it at the back and it sort of sits sits there very nicely as something that you could have as a little display at home you can also make possibly a leaf as well i'll show you how to make a possible leaf which is something you could then glue behind and you can either do a very simple poppy um like this one or you can add more shapes to it a bit more folding and you'll make it more shapely poppy but either will be brilliant so you just need some red paper and also a black pen as well to be able to add in the black center to it as well so grab yourself that paper i'm going to grab myself a board something to press on so i've actually made uh this is half an a4 piece of paper and i'm going to divide this piece of paper in half again so if you grab yourself this is an a5 piece and i'm now going to split it in half so I'm just very carefully taking my time folding it in half to make I guess it's an A6 isn't it so I lined up those corners nice and carefully good strong fold and then you can do a little tiny nick and then tear off the side like so that's it so I don't want my poppy to be too big so I'm going to make a square first of all, origami uses squares, so I'm going to take a corner and line it up down the bottom here, there we go, nicely through the corner and we're going to remove the rectangle, so if you turn it over and then grab this rectangle, pull it back, line it up like so, it looks a bit like a Robin Hood's hat at this point. So strong fold and a little tiny tear there and tear that off. There we go. So now you should have a little square with a diagonal line. Next, I want you to do the other diagonal line. So again, it's usually easier to press on a solid surface as well. And of course the beautiful flowers which you can can buy as donations are, were originally made, I don't know if they still are, by people who have suffered disabilities from after war. So 
being useful and being able to help help each other as well um, very therapeutic making so I've done both diagonals turning it over and then we can do a horizontal and a vertical line or maybe you can make a little card for someone who's remembering members of their family or those who've been lost in war there we go so our little square it will probably be sort of almost turning upwards already so all i'm doing is taking each edge of pushing it together it's a bit like the fortune teller pushing it together and squashing it down like so so i'm squashing it down you can see that it's loose at the top bunched up at the bottom great so we're now going to take this lower edge this diagonal edge and bring it to the middle it's just this one layer though i suppose it's sort of two layers of paper you will see as you do it yourself there we go so i'm going to take that that edge and line it up with the vertical line. I'm going to put the camera now down so I can concentrate as well. Like, no matter how many times you do these things you still have to concentrate yourself and that is the beauty of origami. It encourages you to focus that diagonal edge and bring it up to the vertical line. So they'll meet, it will look a bit like a kite, like so, and then turning it to the back same thing that bottom edge where it's bunched up to the vertical line and this will produce a nice size poppy there we go so those two bottom edges were brought up to the middle line there we go so our next step is to take the bottom point and bring it up there to that that sort of that horizontal line in the middle keep everything nice and lined up all we're doing actually is adding a fold and it will be very useful so i'm bringing this up making sure it's touching the middle good strong fold there we go and now i'm bringing that down and our next step is quite fun it just all appears so quickly so i'm going to take this top layer and i am going to bring it forward I suppose I'm holding that lower bit that's squashed down with the line and I am simply opening, opening it up. Can you see I'm opening up that flower? You might need to go a little bit carefully, gently undoing and opening up, so flattening it down like so. So your poppy should be emerging quite quickly now. So it was all closed up like this with that line that we added holding that line, taking that layer, bringing it down so, and just opening it all up so it looks like a sort of another square. Again you may have to sort of put your fingers in there to sort of get rid of any wrinkles, squashing it down. It sort of curves slightly upwards which I think is really nice, it's almost like a little bowl like so. So it looks really quite square, doesn't look sort of a bit poppy like but not poppy enough I don't think so that's it on the bottom at the back so that's quite useful you've got that there to hold so to make it look more like a poppy this is the first step and the simplest one so you're going to take the top and just fold it back and squash it down like so and you're going to do that for each of these corners that's it and it's just making it a little bit a little bit less pointy and it somehow looks a lot more poppy like that way and what you could do next is add some black into the middle and it will already be a poppy now after this i'm actually going to show you how you can make it even more sophisticated and it's completely up to you you can have done this and it's it's lovely as it is so really don't feel that you do need to do more but i'm going to show you if you wanted to go up a little bit more make it a bit more sophisticated you could rather nice at the pen so there we go and i think that could already make a beautiful beautiful display of contemplation and you can see how it sits there really nicely 
So if you want to make it a little bit more kind of smoother and a bit more shapely, there are more things you could do and it's up to you if you do this. So my first thing to do would be to get rid of these points. Can you see there's still little points there? So all I'm doing is grabbing those edges and turning it back, also tucking it away. So on the back, this is how it's looking. So I am going to do this for each of those little pointy areas. And as I do it, it will make it feel smoother. So I'm just going around and doing that to smooth it down. Also just makes it look a bit neater. Just going around doing that to each one. Find yourself really concentrating. Maybe your tongue will come out if <laughs> you concentrate too much. I know mine could quite easily, so uh, here we go. All right, almost there. I think I've done that now for each of them. So that's looking a bit smoother, isn't it? That's what it looks like on the back. So you can maybe make the edges of the petals a little bit more divided so it goes in a bit. Now to do that it's a little bit trickier because if you turn to the back you'll see for each side there's always one that sort of overlaps more. Can you see there's one which comes over and one that's tucked underneath. So in order we're going to do a little fold to bring it in between the petals. So you're going to have to slightly 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 unpick it and the one that's coming over the top is the one that you need to start by folding down so i'm going to take this definitely have to concentrate quite hard i'm simply folding in a little bit and then doing the same thing on the other side and as you turn it round, can you see it's beginning to add in the more shapely edges so it's a good test of patience this uh, again, you can see the one overlapping would be the one that I would start with. So just gently, gently, you have to be really careful or else the paper could rip. Again, folding that down. Oh, I have to concentrate so hard myself. Particularly hard while filming yourself at the same time. <laughs> but you can see, again, it's looking better, isn't it? So this is something that you can do to improve your... I might do it so you can see from the front what I'm doing. Yeah, actually, this way I can actually see what I'm doing, but I guess you can't see what I'm doing at the back. But I hopefully you got the idea. Start with the start with the one which is overlapping, and just gently fold it in, and then the other one. So you should end up hopefully with a quite shapely poppy. Now, if you'd like to make a leaf. This is something else you could do. Again, more sophistication to your poppy. Um, so something like this. Um, you'd need to then glue it on the back. I haven't found a clever way yet to, to put them together. But they will overlap nicely. And you can then, whoops, add some glue or tape. And that will that would hold it together nicely. Whoops, wrong way around. <laughs> There we go. So that's something you could do. I'll show you how to make the leaf. So grab yourself some green paper, smaller piece, just a small piece. I've just happened to have a little bit cut off. So I'm going to make a little square and then show you how to do that. So here we go, taking my strip of paper, taking the corner, lining it up and squashing it down. There we go. And again, we want to remove this strip. So turning it over, grabbing this, bringing it back, lining it up. We're just making a square every time. And squashing it down. I hope while you're doing this, you're okay, completely lost in folding. But also, I hope you can use this to remember others. Here we go. So I've got now a little square. And I'm going to take a side and bring it to the middle line, like so. I'm going to have to put the camera down again. See what I'm doing. There we go. And again, that top side, bring it to the vertical line, like so. And then the bottom edge, again, to the vertical line. 
and the other side. So if we turn it over, you've got something that looks a bit like a leaf. Now it'd be nice to get the sort of veins of the leaf as well. So to do that, if we just close it inwards. It's kind of smooth front and back. And if you think about the direction of of the of the um of the little creases in the leaf so the veins so we're going to fold it so it gives a line upwards and then we kind of zigzag back and forth all parallel to that line it's very hard to explain into words but i am first of all going to add a line oh i think i definitely need to look down now here we go so can you see i've made a sort of line which will go up in the direction of the leaf and then i'm going to go take that and turn it over and then bring it back and i'm just sort of zigzagging it back and forth but just keeping it all lined up so it ends up almost like a little flat line so it ends up something like that. This is not exact, so don't don't worry. It's just a it's just a way of trying to explain how to make something which is a little bit more textured than just a flat leaf. So then, if you open this up, we'll see what's happened. <laughs> there we go. Can you see? It's a uh, turn it to the smooth side. It's looking something like a leaf, isn't it? The good thing of hold folding it in half like that is it then. Uh, keeps like a little mirror image so it looks good so there we go that should be your leaf and your poppy and I hope you can also yeah donate as well and maybe wear a poppy but I want to thank you I hope that's been a nice thing to do many thanks <laughs>